It's a little chilly at the job site today, so we're gonna have a campfire going all day. So we got some place to come over and warm up. All right, so the front wall is complete. So you can see we got the door on the left, obviously, big window on the right. So that's what the front of the cabin will look like. Now we're gonna head back and do the back walls. The back walls are just a window centered in each room. So those should be pretty easy to frame. And then um, it's 1.30 right now. We'll see if we get a start on one of these side walls or not. All right, so this is what we got uh, done so far here. So that's the door window. We're heading to the back, um, back wall here. So you can see it's just a window centered on each of those two rooms. Okay, so you can see where we did our 16 inches on center framing here. Now I'm framing in the window. And that's the bottom of the wall. Um, we're, so we're gonna stand it up this way, obviously. But right now I'm putting in jacks. So you can see how those go. Those go right here, next to the king studs. This here is the header, which is two by sixes, which will sit like so. And then we'll have our, our cripples here. And those the cripples transfer the weight down to the header, which acts as a bridge over your window. So that transfers the weight back over here to your studs. So as you can see, we're framing in a, a 36 inch by 36 inch opening here. So we're right at 36. <clears throat> so and then my dad's cutting the studs that'll go here to, to make our, uh, our opening here. So. Just a little bit, I think. Yeah, fun. That's pretty good. That's good. A lot of crooked. There you go. Much better. There you go. Yeah, that looks, yeah. Much better. Here, let me start my nail first. Okay, tell me when. Later. Sierra's cooking us up some lunch. For lunch today, we're having some Johnsonvilles.
All right, so we're getting ready to start on the sidewall here. And we're doing this in two 16 foot sections. What's nice about grid paper, um, well, you know, we, this is two scale, so each box represents a foot. So I know exactly where this window is gonna fall on this wall here. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten feet in on the walls is the start of the four foot window. So it's just nice having having a plan like this to go off of. Get it. You just get that one in and then I'll, I'll level it up. I think it's good right there. Okay, well. How's that? That's perfect. Okay, so this three stud corner here, you can see that allows us to, uh, we have something to nail to here for our inside sheeting on this wall, but then that gives us this lip to nail our, uh, whatever we decide to do on the inside sheetrock or wood that way so plus it makes a good strong corner can i get some snow goggles while i'm working <laughs> all right here's what we got so far we started that side wall but obviously it's snowing pretty hard so we're calling it a day but pretty happy with what we got done today What do you think, Skeeter? What's up with the snow, huh? So we're laying out our 16 inches on center here for the sidewall. So we have our tape hooked to this wall, the outside of this wall because we have to account for this three and a half inches because our sheeting will start you know, from here over. So if we went 16 inches and just butted up from here, then we'd be off. So um, from the outside of this wall, you know, we mark 15 and a quarter and then put our X on this side. That way our stud lands in the middle on the 16 inches. And you always go you know, by 16 inches um, 16 inch intervals because that comes out to four feet which is how wide your sheetrock usually is we're using t111 for the siding um so that four foot will put us dead center 
on a stud. So when the end of our uh, sheet, or the end of one of our sheets will end right here in the middle and then the start of our next one will end right in the middle. That way that ties to this stud, which is tied to everything else. So everything ties together. So that's why 16 on center is so important. So we're flying on this wall here goes quick when you don't have a window for a while because you're just getting big sections of walls walls done and they're all just 16 on center so it's pretty straightforward this window here is a little bit different size um the windows in the bedroom are three foot by three foot this one's going to be centered on the sink so it's three foot wide by only two foot tall though because otherwise so this would be hanging below the countertop so um it's just a three foot by two foot wide window and then once we get this one done right about where my dad's standing there is going to be the bathroom window and that's a two foot by two foot window. And then we'll have all four walls done, man. And then I'll give you guys a walkthrough tour of where everything will be. So it'll all make sense. And show you, and then I'll show you guys how we tied everything together and all that too. All right, so here we are. I'm on the corner of the cabin here. You can see that's perfect this way. And then this way, whoops, is also perfect. So we're dead center level, both directions. Um, but if we weren't, you know, we had to pull this a little bit, but that's what this brace is for here. Um, not only does it hold the wall up, but you can also kind of adjust your wall that way. So my dad hold, holds the level, you know, on the on the wall here and lets me know if I, need to, if I need to pull this or push the wall out or whatever, you can kind of move it with these. And then once we get it perfect, when he says, all right, it's perfect, um, then we nail it off and that holds it, you know, so that way it doesn't, it can't flop as much and it's sitting level right now. But we're getting ready to tie um, this last section of wall in here. So all of our other walls are all up right now, you can see. So that's the last section over there. And um, so I'm just going around and double check and making 100% sure that all of our corners are level both ways. Um, that Because once we tie in this last wall, it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to try to level, level the walls off. So, um, so far we're perfect in every corner. So we're getting ready to frame up this last wall and we'll have all the walls up in the cabin. Come, come. Last wall going up on the cabin here. Ready? Stand on that end, huh? Pretty close to the bottom, right? Almost, almost like we measured and stuff. Is 
verify before I nail it all the way in. Uh, it doesn't get too much better than that, does it? I don't think so. So that's what we read all the way around, all four walls, all corners. So we're perfect. We got a level floor and we got level walls now. So we're gonna start sheeting and stiffing all this up. Um, you can nail your top plate on while you're framing on the floor, that'd be easier and then you wouldn't have to be up on a ladder doing it but I, I wasn't I don't think I'm good enough yet to I don't know to leave it long so the walls can tie in and stuff so I just said I'll do it after but you can certainly do it on the ground if you want okay so we left this top plate um, three and a half inches short um, I don't know if you can see that or not but that allows us to slide this one in now to continue with this wall which ties these two together at the top which makes it strong All right, so we got all four walls stood up here. Oh, so just to give you guys a, kind of an idea of how it'll be laid out, this will be the living room area here. This back corner is a bedroom, a 10 foot by 12 foot bedroom. This is a smaller bedroom right in here. Next to this is the bathroom. So there's the bathroom window. And then the kitchen will be in here. And this window is centered over the sink. And then of course, the loft will be in the back up here, um, 12 foot out from the back wall there. I might have to wear my pouch for this job. This way? Yep. All right, here's the first wall complete with a T111 siding. Our wall is perfectly level. Uh, we still got to cut out the windows on this wall, of course, and this will get an oil-based uh, stain, just a clear coat. But we like the we like the look of this. It looks nice. I feel like you accomplished something when you get the uh, siding on. And then we'll have black trim around all windows and doors. So I think it'll look pretty nice. So one wall is done with the siding. It's nice. I keep going around putting a level, you know, in different spots all the time, and everything's perfectly level. So what I'll do is I'll take a sawzall and cut the windows out. And as far as Tyvek goes underneath this, you know, like house wrap, there's mixed, you know, people say, oh, you, you know, you should do it or, oh, you don't need to with this T111. Uh, my grandpa used T111 over 45 years ago on his cabin and there's no signs of rot on the studs at all. Um, and, you know, like I said, he didn't put it on there. So um, I'm going to go by that. I see a lot of people that don't put it on. So 
I don't think it's necessary. Plus with the overhang we're gonna have on our roof, this thing will never see rain anyways. So um, I'm pretty confident that it'll be just fine without the Tyvek house wrap. See we nailed board here, um, flush with this beam, and where the rim joists uh, meet here. So that we're actually nailing into the rim joists here, which will tie the rim joists to the studs. So um, anything we can do to tie everything in to make make it stronger, the better. So that's why we're doing that. A lot of people don't do that, but it, it only makes it stronger. All right, guys, we're getting a little bit of a drizzle here, um, but the walls are all up and the wall sheeting's all done. So this is what the front of the cabin will look like. We have the door and the window cut out in the front, of course. We'll cut the other ones out later, but this gives you an idea of what it'll look like. So this is gonna be the end of this video, but we are gonna start on the roof here once this weather clears up. So stay tuned for part four. <laughs>